Hanging up the cleats is not something the average collegiate football star will frequently mention. Then again, there's nothing typical about Robert Quinn. Robert was built to play football, a fact that became clear early in his playing days at North Charleston's Fort Dorchester High School. As a blue chip recruit and two-time state wrestling champ, Robert entered his senior season with eyes to his suddenly bright future. But as his final year of high school rolled on, signs began to emerge that all was not well. Just simple plays he was missing. Uh, a running, he'd be sitting right here and a running back would run right by him. I'm looking like, man, you didn't see that dude? You know, I know it was bothering him because he would say, Dad, how did I play tonight? I said, you did okay. But uh, you, could, you could see it because it wasn't him, just, just the way he was performing. And then that, uh, when he passed out at school, I, that's when it, everything started falling into place. It was my fourth period class, about midday. Uh, the class just got over, and I was getting up out my uh, out my desk, and walking down the hall, and started walking again. All of a sudden, I'm waking up off the ground. So they rushed him, you know, to the nurse and nurse's office, and I went straight to, you know, to the school. And you know, when I got there, he seemed fine. You know, he just said, "Mom, I didn't eat no breakfast. I just didn't eat nothing, Mom. I'm fine. I'm fine." It's just strange because the next day he woke up like nothing happened. Came back home like nothing ever happened. And then as the weeks went by, I kept saying something's wrong with my son. I just can't put two and two together, but I knew something was wrong. Something was wrong, but Robert continued to take the field each weekend nonetheless, even with continued headaches and an episode in which he blacked out while driving home from a friend's house. Despite the evidence to the contrary, Robert continued to assert that he was okay, a claim that seemed credible, until the morning of October 28th, 2007. It's about, about four o'clock in the morning, I believe it was, four or five in the morning, and uh, I heard a big thump. Woke up to get ready to go, use, to go to use the bathroom. As I was walking to the bathroom, I remember just my dad slapping me in the face, waking me back up off the ground. He was out cold. Well, we had to hit him in his face and, you know, get him to open up his eyes and that's it. I said, that's it. I'm gone. Let's go. Let's get your clothes on. Go to the hospital. At the hospital, a CAT scan revealed that Robert had a tumor in one of the fluid compartments of his brain. The condition required immediate surgery and held unspeakable ramifications for his playing career. Finally, when the big nurse from the medical university came, she told me and him that his career was over. And like, as soon as she walked out, and I just looked at my mom and you know, just, just broke down. I was, man, how you can say, I was sort of like the boob and mouth. I was in, I, I was, I was bawling like a baby. I you mean, know, it hurt me like I, I was done. The next morning, you know, he went into surgery. Rather than remove Robert's tumor, surgeons inserted a shunt into his brain to drain the excess fluid accumulating around the growth. And while the surgery was a complete success, it brought scary revelations to the nature of Robert's condition. All the fluid they pulled out from like what the tumor has built up, the doctor said I should have been brain dead. I mean, from there, from that's all I need to hear. And I figured if I make it through that, I'm. I'm a walking blessing if I can't play football. But early in Robert's recovery, it became evident that football wasn't out of the question. And two months after his surgery, the Quins got the news they previously believed impossible. A month or two later, when I finally went back to go see him on a checkup, and he you know, went to see how things were going and, you know. He says he'll be able to play again, you know. So it was just something. So I mean, I, that's all I needed and I just sort of took it around with it. Robert's recovery was a rapid one. Only months after his surgery, he returned to the wrestling mat, earning a third straight state heavyweight title. 
That fall, he enrolled at North Carolina to continue the career doctors had told him was over. Putting the pads back on and helmet and all that just, just made me, I don't know, well, that's a warm feeling inside, like, I'm, I'm back, everything's back, I'm fine, let's, let's go do this, let's go, let's go try to make a name for myself. <laughs> Robert's parents weren't the only ones taking note of their son's success on the field. After a stellar freshman season, Robert earned the Brian Piccolo Award, given to the ACC's most courageous player. And in 2009, he was named first team all ACC and the runner up for defensive player of the year. While his abilities on the field continue to bring Tar Heel fans to their feet, his resiliency and maturity off the field continue to inspire family and teammates alike. He's a humble guy, you know. He don't even let it bother him anymore. It, I worry every time you know, when he's out on the field, you know, please don't hit my child on the head or, you know. Him, it's nothing. I'm one of the few that got a second chance and I'm not gonna let this one slip away. So any second the hole up under my tumor could close up and when, if it happened to do while I'm still in college, I wanna make sure I can look back and say, I, I don't regret not going hard this play or that game, whatever. So I'm trying to just take the full advantage of the second opportunity that I have.